Today in this lecture, we will talk about concepts related to renal blood flow and oxygen consumption. We will discuss why the blood flow and oxygen consumption in the kidney is very high. We have started discussing the process of urine formation and we have discussed multiple times that the urine formation process begins with filtration. Filtration of blood in the glomerulus where filtrate enters into the Bowman's capsule. The blood enters through the afferent arteriole and then leaves through the efferent arteriole and between them there is glomerular capillaries where filtration of the, uh, filtration of the plasma occurs. For proper filtration process, the blood flow, the blood flow to the kidneys is very much important. Similarly, the oxygen consumption in the process of filtration and reabsorption is also very much important, especially the reabsorption of sodium. Now, coming to the point, is we discussed in the renal blood supply that how different arteries are sup supplying the blood to the kidneys and how they divide. We discussed at that time that the blood flow to the kidneys is about 22% of the blood flow. If the if the human heart is pumping around 5 liters of blood per minute, if the human heart is pumping 5 liters of blood per minute, in that 5 liters, around 1100 ml of blood per minute is being supplied to both the kidneys. This makes it around 22%. Now, if we talk about the weight of the human uh, kidneys, it is around 0.4% of the body weight. Now, with just 0.4% of the body weight, this organ two kidneys are receiving around 22% of the blood now this this is a very big amount or a very big percentage of blood that it is receiving now the main purpose of the blood supply is to bring the nutrients to the organs in any organ the, the purpose of the blood supply the blood flow is to bring the nutrients and take back the waste material but inside the kidney the blood flow not only will supply the tissues of the kidney, it will not only give nutrients to all the cells in the kidney, but it will also help in the filtration process. Now, we have discussed multiple times that the kidney is made of thousands of these nephrons. These nephrons, they are basically uh, present in these pyramids and they are microscopic structure, but in the nephrons, the filtration and the urine formation process is occurring. So, the renal artery enters the kidney and it divides into, into different arteries and then arterioles, but finally, at the level of nephron, it uh, makes the afferent arteriole which bring, brings the blood into the glomerulus. In the glomerulus, filtration occurs and then the filtrate moves to the renal tubules and the, the, the movement of the filtrate in the renal tubules is basically the process of urine formation. Now, this thing was discussed in detail when a small portion of this Bowman's capsule, the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole were enlarged. And we discussed that the pressure, the flow with which blood is coming into the glomerular capillaries is very much important for the filtration process. Now, if we talk about if we talk about the uh, blood supply, the blood flow to the kidneys, apart from bringing apart from bring, bringing the nutrients and taking back the waste matter, the filtration, the blood flow main purpose or the high the 22% of the whole body blood flowing to the kidney is not only for bringing the waste to the tissues, uh, bringing nutrients to the tissues and taking back waste material, but the purpose is to supply enough blood so that proper filtration can occur with proper pressure and it, this process can occur multiple times so that the kidneys can make sure that proper amount of nutrients and waste, waste are balanced. The kidney will make sure that the nutrients get reabsorbed into the uh, peritubular capillaries. The nutrients, if they ever get filtered, they should get reabsorbed into the uh, peritubular capillaries and the waste should go out and for this purpose the blood flowing into the kidneys to both the kidneys is around 22 percent or around 1100 ml per minute now coming to the oxygen consumption of the kidney the oxygen consumption of the kidney if if it is compared with the consumption of oxygen in the brain it is around twice it is around twice but the oxygen supplied to the kidney is around seven times it is around seven times so we compare the oxygen consumption of the kidney with the oxygen consumption of the brain because the brain is one of the uh, those organs which need a lot of oxygen. But the kidneys need even more oxygen than the brain and although its oxygen consumption or its demand is just double, its oxygen consumption uh, demand is double than that of the brain but the supply of oxygen to the kidneys is seven times high. Now, the purpose of supplying high blood flow and high oxygen to the kidneys is to help the kidneys reabsorb the sodium. Well, we discussed that the filtration process occurs at the Bowman's capsule in the glomerulus. The filtrate may contain excess sodium and the sodium is very much important. So, that sodium needs to be reabsorbed from these tubules into the peritubular capillaries and brought back into the blood. So, for this purpose, to reabsorb the sodium from the tubules, from these tubules into the uh, peritubular capillaries, this process, this reabsorption process of sodium needs a lot of oxygen. So, 
And that's why the oxygen supply to the kidneys is seven times higher than the needs of the tissues, the kidney tissues. So now plotting this thing on the graph, we see that when the oxygen, when the sodium reabsorption, when the sodium reabsorption in milli equivalent per minute per 100 gram of kidney, when it increases, this is the sodium reabsorption and this is the oxygen consumption. Now we see A is the oxygen consumption. A is the oxygen consumption, sorry, A is the sodium reabsorption increases. So for example, sodium reabsorption initially is 5 milli equivalent per minute, then 10, 15. A is the sodium reabsorption per minute is increasing. The oxygen consumption also is increasing. But when the sodium reabsorption starts decreasing, when sodium reabsorption starts decreasing, the oxygen consumption of the body also starts decreasing. If the, the filtration process, if the filtration process stops there, if the filtration process stops there and the reabsorption process of the sodium also stop and there is no filtration and no reabsorption of sodium, then this oxygen consumption of the kidney, it will keep on decreasing, decreasing until it touches this level. Now, at this point, at this point, the sodium reabsorption, the sodium reabsorption has decreased to a point where there is zero reabsorption of the sodium. There is zero reabsorption of the sodium. But the oxygen consumption, but the oxygen consumption is still not zero. Now, the, ideally, if you see that when this, if a lot of oxygen is being uh, used, consumed in the sodium reabsorption process, with the sodium reabsorption becoming zero, the oxygen consumption should also become zero, but not, it's not that. When the sodium reabsorption reaches the zero point, the oxygen consumption is still above the zero level. It is like around 0 0.5 ml per minute per 100 gram of kidney weight. Why is it 0 0.5 at zero sodium reabsorption? At this at this point, at this level of oxygen consumption, it shows that this much oxygen, this much oxygen is basically responsible for the metabolic needs of the kidney cells. This level of oxygen, this level of oxygen, so this is the basal need, basal oxygen consumption. This much, this much oxygen, this level of oxygen is required for the basal need, the basal uh, needs of all the cells that are present in the kidney, both the kidneys. And above this level, above this level, the whole of oxygen consumption up to this point or this point, whatever, the whole of this oxygen consumption is used in sodium reabsorption. So when we nullify, when we bring back the sodium reabsorption to the zero point, the oxygen consumption comes to the basal level. It will not touch the zero, rather it will touch the zero, um, the point, the 0 0.5 level, which is the basal level of oxygen consumption, at which the oxygen is used by the kidney cells for their basal needs. And the remaining extra oxygen, the seven times higher oxygen that is supplied to the kidney, it is basically used in sodium reabsorption. So that's all about the uh, renal blood flow and oxygen consumption. And in the coming lectures, we will discuss the different determinants of the uh, renal blood flow and the different factors which can increase or decrease the renal blood flow. And then uh, the renal blood flow increase or decrease in renal blood flow will affect the filtration and glomerular filtration rate and ultimately the urine formation process. So the ultimate purpose of studying the whole renal system is to study the process of urine formation or how the kidney is working. But to understand each and everything, we have to uh, dive deep into the molecular level of the kidney and we have to discuss each and everything in detail. Thanks a lot for watching the video.